So here are four things a design system team shouldn't do. Now, if you're a design system designer or you've worked with design systems teams, I'd love to hear what you think about these. Maybe there are things I've missed off or there are things that you think everyone should be aware of. So please let me know down in the comments, but let's jump right into it. So the first thing I think a design system team shouldn't do is that they shouldn't move fast. That's not the job of a design system team. I recently found this article written by Josh Clark, who works for an agency called Big Medium. It was actually published last October, and in it, he describes something called pace layers. So here's the gist. Imagine you've got an object orbiting something, like a planet moving around a sun. After a fixed period of time, it always comes back to the same place. Now imagine you have another planet, which is further out in orbit, but at the same period, it's always at the same place, so it stays in line. The object which is further out will necessarily have to move faster to keep up. These are what's called pace layers, and in 1999, Stuart Brand applied this concept in a book called The Clock of the Long Now to ideas about the pace at which civilization moves. Josh gives us this amazing diagram of how the product design process works, and he categorizes things in these pace layers. So at the furthest end, you've got product. So a product's features and the way a product develops and responds to requests from its users, and fixes bugs and identifies needs and solves them, that is always moving fastest. And then moving in, you've got product research, which doesn't happen as fast as product does, but it still should happen really frequently. And then you've got visual brand and visual identity. And then in the middle, you've got design system. So design systems provide this kind of infrastructure, this bedrock. They're slow to move, and often this is where friction comes. You're kind of pushing up with the design system team or the design system team is pushing up with the product teams and they're moving at different rates. But I think keeping this diagram in mind is useful because it helps you realize that these things aren't meant to move at the same time. And design systems, in my opinion, should be moving slower than everyone else in the product organization. So number two follows on from this, as well as design systems teams moving slower, I think the role of a design systems team is not to innovate, but rather it's to curate. So if you're a design system designer, you shouldn't be making fancy toggle switches and components and card layouts. What instead you should be doing is looking at what the product designers in your company are building and designing and what's being implemented and curate. You should go out and speak to these designers and find consistencies and inconsistencies and find where similar things are being used and consolidate them all and in the process of consolidation, make them more usable. Make them more usable for product designers to discover and people who don't know about these components to use, but also make them more usable for developers and people who go and implement them. One analogy I like to keep in mind while thinking about this point is that design systems teams aren't architects. They're not setting out building plans for someone to go and build in three to five years. They should be more like archaeologists. They should be discovering what's already been built and shaping that for other people in the organization to use. So the third thing which design systems teams shouldn't do comes from my friend Henry Daggett. I was chatting to him about this. He's a design systems lead at Societe Generale, and you can watch an interview we did about Figma variables on this channel. And he basically said that design systems teams shouldn't copy other people. The whole point of having a design system team or working on a company's design system is that it should be bespoke. It should be for your organization, it should be for your users. And so just like building any other product, you really need to understand what those end users needs are. Just going and copying the Atlassian or IBM design system or taking Shopify's Polaris components won't help you. It's useful to see those things as examples for inspiration and to see what best practices are, but really you need to work on what makes the most sense for your company. And the last thing a design system team shouldn't do is focus only on colors and buttons and all those little fiddly material bits. I think it's of much higher value to focus on people and processes because those are the difficult things. And once you've worked out what those processes are, you'll make so much more progress. Dan Marl has a great talk about this. I think there's a recording of it from Config, which you can watch online. And it's all about what the next component you should build for your design system is. And instead of just building a button or wrapping your logo in a container, you should work out what provides the most value first. It's important to work on and publish components that will have value for the business to stop your design systems and component libraries becoming ghost towns or graveyards where 
it's loads of published components that no one uses or it's stuff that's just gone stale and is completely out of date. So go watch that talk, I really rate it. And like I said at the beginning of the video, this is where I want to hear from you. If you've been working with a design system or you don't have a design system team working with you and you're doing everything at the same time, you're making things into components while making features, I'd love to hear what you think, what you should and shouldn't do. Please do share them with me in the comments, I'd love to read them. But for now, that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please do hit like and make sure you subscribe. I know that lots of people watching these videos haven't subscribed yet, so please do hit subscribe. It really helps me with this channel. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.